Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. I want to thank Pastor and his wife for giving me this opportunity. Um, I'm always thankful for the, 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 the leadership that God has placed in, in this church. Uh, Pastor, can you lead us in prayer, please? Lord Jesus. All right, I asked Brother Smith if he would uh, read some scriptures. The first scripture would be Psalm 78, verse 40 and 41. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. And then can you read John 10, 10, please? For the thief cometh not but... Or to steal, kill, and destroy. If I could put a title on this. I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. If I could put a title on this ser sermon today, it would be Take the Limits Off God. All right. All right. I once heard a story several years ago about a young man who came from an underprivileged background but had a dream of traveling the world. After he got his first study job, he immediately began to put back money a little at a time to finance his dream. The, d the day came when he had scrapped and saved just enough money to purchase a ticket on a cruise liner that was sailing the exotic Caribbean port ports. He almost uh, besides himself with excitement as he prepared to buy the ticket. Only a few moments later, he realization set in. As a matter of fact, there were very little, or there was very little money left to eat on. So he pulled together all his money, purchased some bread and cheese to live on, and went and bought the ticket to the cruise. It was a long voyage, and he vastly enjoyed the fanatic and exotic places they visited. Each day, he would take in the sights and the sounds of the world that he had dreamed of. Each evening, he would retreat. Um, his room on the ship and eat his cheese and bread and drink a little water from the tap. All in it was a very, very satisfying trip and in his opinion it was worth the sacrifice to finally fulfill his dreams. However, one day on his way back to his room in the evening um, he happened to pass by one of the large dining rooms on the ship. Uh, standing at the door besides one of the ship's officer, he, has, he observed the delightful and succulent food. Oh, what a feast! Ice sculptures, shrimp, and seafood, steaks, and prime rib, roasted chicken, every protein imaginable. The vegetables, what an in incredible array of side dishes. Oh, and desserts, chocolate flowed from fountains, wonderful cakes and pies, sweets of every kind. It was impressive banquet fit for a king. Sadly, the boy turned and headed back to his room. On that night, the bread and cheese wasn't quite as satisfying as it had been before. Each night for the rest of the trip, he would sit in his room, eat his bread and cheese, and dreamed about tremendous feasts that was being served in the ship's dining hall. Each night he would try to comfort himself with the knowledge that he had gotten all he could afford and, and should be happy um, as such as a fa fa fanatic voyage. Finally, the day came, the ship arrived back to the home port. The young man gathered his belongings and was prepared to disembark the ship. When, the, when he was approached by one of the ship's officers, it was the same officer that had stood with him that evening outside the dining facility. The man asked the boy a, a curious question. I'm wondering, sir, have we done something to offend you? I couldn't help but notice that you never took a single meal with us in the ship's dining hall. Blushing, the young man uh, shuffled his feet and replied to the officer, oh no, you haven't offended me. 
I couldn't afford such a wonderful meal. I spent all the money I had on my ticket and a little bread and cheese. With a stunned look, the officer replied, but sir, didn't you know? I am so sorry to tell you this. The meals were included in the price of the ticket. Talk about living below your means. He could have had it all, but he limited himself to the very least. All because he didn't know what was included with the price of the ticket. I am here on this Tuesday afternoon and I am convinced that there are some of us in this house of God that we are living below our means. There are many of us that are living on bread and cheese when the greatest promises of God have been bought and paid for on an old rugged cross. We all have needs in our lives. Some of us have been carrying around some needs for a long time that God has never intended for us to struggle with. It's not God's will for your life that you walk around time, all the time underneath heavy clouds of depression and uncertainty. In Matthew 11.30, his yoke is easy, his burden is light. Yet some of us insist on shouldering the heavy load, worries, and stress. I've come to tell you that you don't have to live that way. Jesus said in Luke 12, this is the NLT version. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, but God feeds them. And you are more valuable to him than any bird. Yet we worry and despair over little things and things that are out of our control. We need to wake up and realize that the Father's good pleasure is to give us the kingdom. The devil is like a pickpocket, a good pickpocket, steals from you and we don't even realize it. We've been robbed. Some of us has, have lost things over the years. We didn't even know it. Little by little, hell has been robbing you of your faith. He has been stealing our victories. Come he has on, got us convinced that we have to take care of all our needs on our own. He has convinced you by default that it's just another Sunday afternoon or Tuesday night. Nothing life-altering is going to happen in this service today. After all, it's been hundreds of times before. This is, going, this is just going to be an ordinary service. I can't help but wonder how we can expect the ordinary when we serve an extraordinary God. How can we... Go, how, or if you got a need today, let me introduce you to my God. He's anything but ordinary. He, he, you may need, or you need may, your, your need may be huge, but God's bigger than your need. Yes, your problem may be life shattering, but God is the master of picking up the pieces um, and putting them back together again. If you're hungry, he's the God of heavenly manna. If yes. you're thirsty, He's the one that causes fountains of living water to spring up in dry and barren places. If you are confused and troubled, he is the prince of peace. If you are depressed and down, he is the joy giver. If you are sick in body, he is the great physician. If you find yourself in an overwhelming storm, he's the one that speaks to the winds and waves saying, peace be still. And we come to church with our big, big problems and our dilemmas and we have the audacity to believe that somehow we are out of reach of God. I've come to tell you in this house today that our God can do all things. Nothing is impossible. As a matter of fact, there is the only thing that can limit God is our lack of faith. In Matthew chapter 13, we find Jesus in Nazareth in his hometown. By his reputation, or by the time his reputation has been spread around, this is the miracle worker. This is the one that multiplies fish and loaves. He heals the blind eyes, the lame leap and run, the dead are risen. When he rocks into Raz Nazareth, they say, is this not the carpenter's son? Hey, isn't, isn't that Mary's boy? And they were offended in him because they were familiar with him and from the very outset they limited on what he could do in their midst. The tragedy of this story is the fact that he went there with many mighty works that he desired to do. As a matter of fact, in Matthew 13, 58, he says that he did not, he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. In other words, if they had not allowed their famil familiarity uh, with him to limit their faith, um, then Jesus would have 
done many mighty works among them, but their virtue um, of their limited faith, they limited God. Some of us have grown satisfied to be, or grown to be satisfied in the presence of God, a familiarity with the house of God and the things of God, instead of the person and power of God. Um, has caused you, caused you to limit your expectations of what God can and will do. And your limited expectations, uh, your, your limited faith puts limits on God. If I'm here to tell you tonight that God has prepared a table in the presence of your enemies. Wow. It is wow. his desire that you would feast upon the riches of his glory and le- leave this house today with victory in your heart. Living yes. uh, water bubbling over the inside, full of manna of the Holy Ghost. Yes. But if you don't believe, it's if you limit your faith, if you curb your expectation today, then you're going home with much less than God has intended you to have. Some of us came into this house with your mind made up that you were content with your bread and cheese. But God came into this house and house and spread a table for you and said, come and dine. Yes. Here's the tragedy of the situation. If you turn your faith loose, God will, God will leave this house today with many mighty works yet undone. Some, somebody underneath the sound of my voice needs to realize that you've been living on bread and cheese. God has more for you. Somebody needs to recognize that you have to go home with your needs or that you don't have to go home with your needs unmet. You don't have to go home with the heavy weight of the burdens of stress and anxiety that you were never meant to carry. It's high time that you take the limits off God and let God be in your life. It's high time you turned it all over to him. Trust him to do to work some things out for you instead of trying to carry the load by yourself. The problem is that some of us have Thomas faith. Thomas had natural human faith that was based on physical evidence. He could only believe only things that he could see or touch. This is because we live in a realm that is demonstrated by our five senses. The things that we can touch, hear, taste, smell, all the things that are real to us. Everything that is experienced in the flesh is experienced in more um, of those five senses. The problem comes in when we attempt to limit or faith in God to those five senses. The problem comes when we try to pin down God and make him operate within the realm of our understanding. We try to package him up in a nice little teeny box. We try to explain and try to explain and control him. We can't explain God. We can't control God and we can't define God. He doesn't operate by any of our laws. He is almighty. He can do anything. We can have a tendency to limit him. We create certain needs in our mind that are somehow outside or above the authority of God. We set certain needs aside and accept the idea that God can't do anything about these things. We believe that God has some power, um, but we struggle with the idea that he has all power. We believe that God can do things we, God can do things, um, but we struggle with the idea that he can't do all things. We believe that he can forgive sins and fill us with the Holy Ghost, but we can't believe that he can heal cancer or open blind eyes. We believe that when we go under the water in Jesus' name that our sins are washed away, but we can't seem to believe that he has the power to set us free from freshly addictions. We believe that he can fill us with the Holy Ghost and cause us to speak in another language as the Spirit gives the utterance, but we stumble at the idea that he can meet all of our needs today. Jesus asked the Pharisees in Mark 2 and 9, which is easier to say, thy sins are forgiven or take up thy bed and walk. Yes. What Jesus was saying was, hey, I'm the Almighty. Yes. It's the same. It's all the same to me. I can heal the sick as easily as I flung the stars into the heavenly or the heavens. I can cast sins into the sea of forgetfulness as I easily divided the light from darkness. God can meet your needs just as easily as he uh, meets your small ones. If he has the power to wash your sins away in baptism, then he has the power to meet all of your needs in this place tonight. I heard a story about a little boy that came from Sunday school. His dad asked him, Johnny, what did you learn today? 
and Johnny proceeded to tell the most fascinating tale. He told of the Christian Israel uh, trapped in between the Egyptian army and the Red Sea. He told how the situation was helpless, how it appeared that all was lost, but then all of a sudden God's army showed up as an, and as engineers built a bridge across the Red Sea. God's fighter planes attacked the Egyptian army, great bombers blasted them, and God's special forces completely devastated the royal guards. When Johnny's uh, story was over, the smoke was differing from the battlefield. The, the children of Israel were safe on the other side of the Red Sea, and the Egyptian armies were a pile of wreckage. It was total victory. Johnny's dad looked at him and said, Now, son, I don't think that's how the story, or your Sunday school teacher told the story, is it? No, dad, but if you didn't, or you wouldn't ever believe me if I told you the way she told it. Sometimes you were, we are just little Johnny. We box up God in our little, nice, tidy little package, and we confine him to our senses. We limit God in our lives. We limit what he can do in a service like this one. We have that power. We, are, we alone have the ability to tie the hands of God. We can stop him from doing what he wants in our lives. We can limit... Um, we can limit our faith in God, and by doing so, we can limit the mighty God. But I come to tell you that God doesn't fit in your box. We can't contain God in your limited understanding. You can't contain God in the sanctuary. You can't contain God in your pocketbook. You can't contain God in earth or the heavens. He is bigger than his creation. He is the Almighty and all-knowing. All power in heaven and in earth yields to his name. He is the mighty God. He is bigger than your problems. You can't contain him today, but you can limit him. They limited God. Somehow the children of God in the wilderness managed to forget all of the mighty miracles that brought them to that place. Somehow they failed to remember the fantastic uh, uh, miraculous deliverance of God and instead stumbled in the, their unbelief. Those who had seen God do such great and wonderful things couldn't find the faith to believe that he could deliver them from their current dilemma. The psalmist, one one, time after time, they took, turned back and limited the one or the Holy One of Israel. Some of us are guilty of the same thing. Some of us have forgotten that God has already done for us. Some of us need to remember that he did it before and will do it again. It is time to take the limits off God. It is time to turn God loose in our lives, in our homes, in our church, in our faith. It is time to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. It is time to let go and let God be God. I find that our biggest problem is not believing that God can do all things. It is believing that God will do all things. Consider Martha. After Lazarus was dead and in the grave for four days, Jesus finally he did the call and came to Bethany. Martha, hearing he was coming, ran out to meet him. When she saw him, she cried out, If only you had been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. She believed that he could have healed Lazarus. Jesus looked at her and told her, Frankly, in John eleven twenty three, Your brother will live again. But Martha responded, I know that he will rise again at the resurrection. She believed that... Uh, he could raise Lazarus from the dead. It wasn't a problem with, with believing that God could. It was a problem with believing that he would. Right. Some of us know that God can. You've been in this thing long enough. You've seen enough to know that God can. Some of our problem is that we somehow convinced ourselves that God won't. That our problem is too small. Our faith is too weak. Our enemy is too much. Somehow you've convinced yourself that it is a lot in life to do, or a lot in life to carry this heavy, heavy burden without any assistance. I come to tell you that this is high time that you turn God loose in your life. You have been living below your means for too long. You have been living on bread and cheese while the Master has prepared uh, for you a feast tonight. I hear a call from the throne room of heaven, come and dine. Come and bring your burdens and lay them at the foot of the cross. 
Come and bring your hurts. Come and shed your bitterness and hurt. Come and find healing for your soul and your body. Come to the master. Turn your faith loose and let God in your life tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Why don't we all stand? Thank you, Jesus. Praise our